What is up, everybody? So today I thought I would talk about um, something in my JS Mocking Fundamentals um, workshop thing. So here on testingjavascript.com, there is a part here, JavaScript Mocking Fundamentals. And uh, as part of that, um, if we look at the actual stuff here, um, yeah, probably the first one um, we can see. Um, that what what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you, hey, like here, let's see if we can get to the test, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this this is a test, but it, it has no framework, like testing framework at all. So we've got the assert module that we're importing in here. We're importing our other modules. We're making assertions. Um, but then as you can see on the right, when I'm actually running this code, um, we're actually running it through Jest. So we see the fail no framework is the display name. Um, it shows us the path and it shows us the error message um, and it shows us all the test related information stuff too. So how am I running this file which has no test? Like if you were to run this with just today, it would say, hey, you don't have any tests in here. Um, so how do we run this file which technically has no tests um, but using just? So that's what I thought I would show you today. Um, Okay, so the way that this works is here we go to our uh, no framework, um, that particular, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, this particular test that we were looking at, I think is right this one. Yeah, so we're importing a cert, um, we're making strict equal, and then we're doing this monkey patch mocking um, thing here. So how do I get this to run in Jest? Well, if I um, run, let's see, npx Jest config is other um, Jest.no framework. Then this will run my no framework um, test. Oh yeah, and there's, I gotta figure out what the problem is there. Ignore that. Uh, we'll run, run this in watch mode and we get all the benefits of watch mode. I can hit the P key and no framework, or actually, let's see, we want monkey patching, so it only runs the one. If there is a failure, um, then we're gonna see that failure output. So it's pretty cool. So how is this accomplished? And <clears throat> maybe I'll, let me give you a little bit more of the why this is cool. Um, the way that we, we do this is with create just runner um, and you don't have to use this. This is just a, a helper utility that enables you to write custom runners for Jest. Um, but that's the one that pretty much everybody uses because it's really helpful. Um, but with this, we can create um, a test runner for Newman, which actually uh, Larry uh, Brothma or Bro Brotha, yeah, Larry Brothma Brotha watched my testing course and thought Jest was so cool. He made his own uh, test runner for Newman, which is a CLI tool for Postman, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, but then we have Markdown Lint, uh, the TypeScript compiler, PHP unit, so you can run your PHP tests with Jest, SAS Lint, ES Lint, Nightwatch, uh, just like prettier TS Lint, Flow Type, Standard, Babel, um, GraphQL, GraphQL Schema, Linter, prettier, spell check, yeah, bunch of other, and yeah, a whole bunch of other things. I feel like there was one other that I was looking for. Puppeteer? I thought there was a puppeteer runner. Just runner puppeteer. It might be that they um, aren't using a runner, but an environment, um, which is similar. Yeah, it's this is a preset. Anyway, so you can do a lot of stuff with Jest. Um, we'll just leave it at that. So in particular, creating a custom runner so you can run different languages or, or things that are not actually just tests. Um, the way that that works is here, if we look at our configuration that will um, actually run our stuff, uh, we have the normal configuration, root dir, roots, uh, display name. That's what makes this no framework show up. So you can differentiate when you're running uh, two separate configurations at the same time. Uh, we've got our test match. And then here's the key, we have a runner. Uh, so here, this is a path to a node module. Um, the thing about the Jest configuration is that the values you provide to it have to be serializable um, because they uh, can take them in as JSON. 
uh, which is interesting. So you can generate your config um, into an object, but the object that you export has to be serializable, so no functions or whatever. And that's why this needs to be a path to a module. So that when Jess comes around, it's like, oh, you have a runner, let me go require that runner. So that is right in here. And what we're doing in here is we're requiring create Jest runner, which um, provides a nice API for us. We invoke create Jest runner with a path to another module, which I think is really weird. And I don't think that that should be the way it is, but it is the way it is. So we make another module. Um, and that is this node runner thing. So the node runner is pretty, this is where all the, the real, the, um, yeah, the, the real stuff for our runner goes. And here we're using worker so that we can um, just start um, running um, files on a separate thread. They're in their own environment. They can muck up the environment however they want. It's not going to impact our test environment. Um, and so this is what Jest uses by default. Um, we'll pull off the default property. Thank you, ES modules. Um, and then we're gonna get the create Jest runner and pull off fail and pass. And that is what determines, uh, we use those to determine whether or not we consider the run of this particular module or this test to have passed or failed. So um, our async function here will be called with an object and it's got a couple properties on it, but the one we care about is the test path. And ours, all that we really need to do is require the module. And if um, the module ran successfully, then we can assume the test passed. If the module um, failed in some spec spectacular way, then the test failed. So here's just setting up um, everything. We're creating a new worker, something that'll run in a new thread. We say, this is uh, the path to the module that we want to run. Um, you'll note that it's not the test path, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, because a worker, here actually, I'll show you why right now. A worker, um, is a module which um, exports something. And in our case, oh, whoops, I lost it. Um, in our case, the well, the worker is going to um, require that module and find out what uh, methods it has on it. And then we can call those methods, but then those methods will all be asynchronous and, um, and the worker will be responsible for communicating between the different processes. Uh, so it's a really, really, like we don't have to use the Jest worker thing here, but it's this is a really easy way to spawn uh, a separate process and keep things isolated. Um, eventually JavaScript will hopefully have this feature called realms, which will uh, make something like this a lot easier. But right now we have to spawn a different process to make things isolated. Um, okay, so we've got our worker and we want to say, hey, I want the standard out to be piped to process standard out. So we see all the console logs and whatever, and the same with standard error. Um, and then we'll write a new line before we start it, before we require anything. Um, I can't remember why that was, but I, I think that like things are writing on top of each other. So I just said, hey, let's write a new line. Uh, and then we get our start time. Um, and then we try to require, uh, we, uh, well, we call this require method, but remember we've got our process right here that the node runner is running and the worker has spawned a separate process. And so when we say worker.require, it's gonna say, oh, okay, I'm going to tell that separate process to call the function require um, and I'm gonna pass it this uh, parameter. Now, what you pass it, I think, I'm pretty sure it has to be serializable so that it can communicate across those channels. So you couldn't pass a function here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. But uh, yeah, because I can't imagine how they would do that with closures and whatnot. Um, so we're just passing a string. And then um, our require is going to take that module path, and it's just going to require the module path. And um, if this function throws an error, then our promise will reject. If it does not, then our promise will resolve to whatever was returned. In our case, we don't care what was returned because it's just running this code. So. Um, we're just basically, we'll say, hey, require that thing. And if it fails, then it's gonna fall into this catch block. If it doesn't, then we'll continue on here. Uh, so if it doesn't fail, we're gonna call the pass method from create just runner. And we'll get start and end. Uh, we, we got the start initially uh, and the end is what it is now. Um, and so that is useful for the time um, label there and also the time label here. Uh, and then we 
specify which test this is. Um, we specify the path. There are other options that you can uh, put in here, but this is for our node runner. Uh, okay, so then on the fail side, we have a start and end. And then here for our test, we're going to say, here's the path to the thing that failed. Here's the error message. Um, this is the error message that the worker is going to give to us because this require function um, blew up in this process. And so the worker is going to say, hey, I'm going to throw that same error over here. Uh, and so that error message shows up here. And then we can give our own title um, to uh, for the failure. So if I say, again, if I switch this to high, then we're going to get test failure. Uh, Jess is going to take care of the X there and, and colors and whatever. Um, and I think, um, I think in the video, this showed up as, uh, no, it didn't show up as red. I'm pretty sure that there would be a way for me to make this actually show up as red, which would, uh, would be kind of cool. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're not doing that right now. So yeah, that's, that's basically how it works. So just a quick review. In your Jest configuration, you specify a runner. Um, like I showed you, there are lots of runners already on NPM that you can use. Um, and then with that runner, you can use, um, uh, let's see, you can use create Jest runner. And I recommend it because it's got a nice API. You don't have to. Um, I think, I, I actually don't know what the raw API is. Um, but yeah, here then we're going to invoke create Jest runner with a path to a module that um, uh, exports an asynchronous function. It accepts the test path, and then you do all the worker stuff. You in, Inside of here, you do whatever you want to. It really doesn't matter. All that matters is that you return an uh, invocation of pass or an invocation of fail. So whatever uh, passing and failing means for your runner, that's what you do. And that's it. Uh, okay, let me review any questions, and then I'm going to jump off. So um, is there any way to make Jest projects run in specific order? Um, yeah, that's a good question, Sebastian. So uh, Jest has this really awesome feature, which actually I do show in this course under Configure Jest for testing applications, projects. Configure Jest. Uh, nope, nope multiple configurations with just projects features. Um, let me see if I can show you. Okay, so here we have um, a server version of our test and a client because our our um, some of our code can run on the server, um, but it also runs in the client. So we want to have separate tests for those so they're in different environment, right? But I don't want to um, run. I, I don't want to run one after the other, which is what we're doing right here. I want to run them at the same time. And so here we use jet, uh, just dash dash projects, and we can run them both. Actually, I don't know why I showed you that, because I've got it right here. You can also use the configuration here, and we say our projects, and point to a just configuration or a, file, uh, a path that has a just configuration. Um, and so then um, with that, it uh, I lost the words that I was going to say about that. Um, yeah, so it'll run it all at the same time. So this is a long way to answer your question. No, I don't believe that it's possible to have it run one after the other. If you want to have it run one after the other um, or run in a specific order, then uh, just run them. Like run this one in the terminal, then run this one. Uh, or you could use and and. Uh, I don't think that there's any way, and it's kind of against the, the idea behind the feature in the first place. The idea is I want to run everything all at the same time. Um, in, in the same process, um, like same watch mode and whatever. Um, so yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, so unsalted skies. Let me uh, mention this. So we've got this plus new date. I actually copy pasted this. If I were to do this, I'd probably do this. Get time. I'm pretty sure that's the exact same thing. Here, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it still works. So that's normally how I, I would do that because I feel like that's more clear. Um, that plus there, that's some clever code. Um, any way to import global CSS into Jest JS DOM? I want to test, for example, if an element has cursor pointer, uh, if it has a prop on click. Um, yeah, so um, I'm actually maybe going to be investigating this a little bit. Right now, if you're using CSS and JS, then all of those styles should be in JS DOM's um, style sheet. 
and you should be able to access those. And you can use projects like um, Jest Emotion or Jest Glimmer React or uh, Jest Styled Components, and um, depending on which project you're using, and um, and you can access those um, those values. If you're not using CSS and JS, you're just using regular CSS. You're importing CSS or something. Um, I'm pretty sure there like there's got to be a way to load the CSS into um, the like test environment, uh, and then there's probably a way to identify like which rules apply to the element that you, of interest. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but and it probably would take a bit of work, and that work could probably be turned into an open source module. Um, so in my work at PayPal right now, I am um, doing doing some work on a component library that is using regular CSS. Um, importing it with uh, with Webpack uh, CSS loader. And I think that I'm going to want to test some of these things. And so I'll be working on this and we'll see how far I get. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, that's a good, good point. Um, um, I'm not sure how to say your name, but um, it says, I think run and ban tests run sequentially in Jest. That is true. Um, but I don't think that there's a way to say run this project, then run this project. Um, okay, I'm using custom bootstrap. We need to move to CSS and JS. I think it's pretty great. Um, I'm actually starting to think that uh, regular CSS is good for... Th this is actually something that Jamie um, Kyle is talking about recently. But for a design system, regular CSS is actually like a good good idea. Um, and then for application code, I'm a huge fan of uh, CSS and JS. The nice thing is that with your um, uh, with your library, um, you can use um, uh, Webpack CSS loader to import only the CSS that you need for the particular um, component. And so if you write your CSS in a modular way where you say, this is the CSS for this component, this is the one for this one, and you don't rely on the cascade, um, for like, oh, well, this one re actually requires these CSS things to be in, the, um, then you can get yourself in a pretty good situation. Right now, I'm actually building something I'm calling R classy. What? Um, which is basically like styled components, except instead of providing um, inline CSS, you provide class names. Um, and it also has a props idea where you can provide custom props, and then um, you can determine which class names to apply based on those props. And then consumers of that um, can, in turn, um, provide uh, additional class names that they want to uh, apply. Or what's even better uh, is consumers should be using emotion, and then they can use the CSS prop, and that turns into a class name. And so at runtime, it, it all works. So I think the sweet spot for me is the UI library uh, uses regular CSS, and then the application code uses emotion. Um, one unsolved part of that is what do I do with um, uh, with theming? And I'm not sure, like a, a, for a UI library, how theming would work. Um, I'm thinking you just load up different CSS, but if you're importing the CSS, then that's kind of tricky. So you'd have to have a separate build or something. So I'm still working that one out. Um, I'm not I'm not sure how to solve that problem. But um, yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, in, in my particular use case, we don't really have a um, a theming requirement, so I'm not too concerned about that. I might not ever solve that one. Okay, sweet. That's going to be it for me. Um, I kind of took a little detour into CSS today, um, but I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week when we talk about something else. Uh, if you are at all interested, you can go to kcd um, kcdim slash ama and you can ask questions there and I will try to answer them. Um, here, after I finish this live stream, I'm going to make a three minute podcast to answer one of these questions. Um, and then also these um, live streams often come from questions on here. So if you have anything that you'd like me to live stream, you can do it here uh, or ask me here. And as always, uh, buy testingjavascript.com if you care about confidence in your code base. Okay, well, uh, yeah, we'll see you all later. Have a wonderful weekend.